Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2013. In this section we're going to start to look at working with text in PowerPoint 2013. We've already added some text to some slides but we're going to concentrate here on not only adding text but how to format it and some of the functions and facilities within PowerPoint 2013 that can help us to make the best use of text in our presentations. So let's get started. Now on this occasion we're starting with another new presentation and as I pointed out to you earlier in the course typically when you start a new blank presentation you're presented with an initial slide with a couple of text placeholders. The top placeholder here says click to add title, the lower one says click to add subtitle. If you click within the area of a placeholder one thing you'll notice apart from the cursor is that on the home tab in the font group you will see which font is in force at that point. This is a version of Calibri Light and the point size that's in force is 60 point. Now let me start to type in that title. Now watch carefully. When I got to the end of that line, it automatically turned a line. I'm still on Calibri Light 60 point and I'm still able to type, carry on typing. Now watch what happened. When I got past a certain point there, PowerPoint 2013 realized that it could no longer fit what I was typing into the available space and so it dropped the point size down to a point size where it can now fit the text. Now the behavior we're looking at there is associated with what are called placeholder text boxes and this is one of the things you need to be aware of when you're typing text into a placeholder text box and that is that the text will often be resized automatically to fit the available space. So although we're going to talk now about controlling text and entering text, be aware that in PowerPoint 2013 some things are automated and may take you a little bit by surprise. So we're going to be looking now at text and placeholder text boxes is a good place to start. We've already seen some behavior of one of the placeholder text boxes on this particular slide. There is also a lower placeholder text box, one that says click to add subtitle in it. Let's click in that. Again, we could just type away. Note that the text box has sizing handles around it, so we can change the size of that text box and it also has in fact a rotation control. If you hover over that rotation control and just move with the mouse or with your finger if you're using touch you can actually rotate the text as well. Now note when it's in normal use when we're entering text the perimeter of the box is a sort of dotted line. If you click on the perimeter you make it into a continuous line and you get that prompt back again that says click to add subtitle which you get with a placeholder text box. At that point if you press the delete key you can actually delete that text box altogether and at this stage we're not going to be using that particular placeholder text box again for a little while. Let's concentrate on the text we've already typed. So first of all I'm going to make this box a little bit bigger. I'm going to pull that control down there. I'm going to put the cursor to the right of the word long and now I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm going to change the font from Calibri Light to Algerian and I'm going to change the point size from 60 to 36. I'm going to do a little bit more typing. Now note once I change the font and the size from that point onwards as I typed what I typed appeared in the new font and the new size. It did not affect the text that was already there in that text box. Now one key feature of virtually every PowerPoint presentation that you see is the use of words, the use of text. So being able to enter and format text is very important. And there's one particular area of the ribbon 
that is really geared towards making sure that we get everything to do with text right. It's on the Home tab and it's this font group. Now I've already used a couple of controls in the font group to change the font and the font size but there are several other controls there and it's important to know how to use those as well. In the bottom left hand corner of the font group we have that button that sets bold, that one that sets italic, that one that says underline and then we have some others. We have this one which produces a text shadow effect, another one that does a strike through effect. Now let's suppose that I'm going to carry on typing but before I do I'm going to change the font size from 36 to 60 and I'm going to put italic and strike through on as well. Now let me carry on typing. And you can see the effect of adding those two additional features to the text that I'm typing in. So that's very important from the point of view of being able to set all the features of text before we type it in. What about text that's already there? How do I change that? Well the key to being able to change the text that's already there is being able to make a selection. And I've mentioned selections once or twice already earlier in the course but let's look now a little bit more about how we make a selection. And let's start by making a selection with keyboard and mouse. Let's suppose that I'm going to change the text features of the phrase I am going. Now to select that with keyboard and mouse I click to the left of I, then I hold the mouse button down and sweep the mouse to the right. I'll see what I'm selecting as I go there and when I've selected the area I want I release the mouse button and the shading tells me that that particular phrase has been selected. Now note also that I get that mini toolbar that we looked at earlier on and if what I need is on the mini toolbar I could format this text now. If all I wanted to do was to make it bold I could click bold now and that piece of text would be made bold. As soon as I click away I deselect that piece of text so whatever I do next will not be applied to that piece of text. Let me select the same piece again but this time I'm going to go up to the font group on the home tab and I'm going to use that button and that is an increase font size button the one to its right is a decrease font size button so let's start with increase font size if all I want to do is make it bigger I'll make it bigger if I don't want to make it smaller again I'll make it smaller now let me make a change to the formatting of the top line there. Here is a very long phrase. Now to do this using touch I need to make a selection using touch. So first of all tap to the left of the word here. Now the little circle there which denotes the beginning of the selection I now drag that off to the right until I've selected what I want to select. And as I drag you'll see that it's shading each part of the phrase. When I get to the end of the selection release my finger again and I've got a selection and the ends of the selection are marked by that pair of little circles. Now once I've made the selection I can make the font change using the ribbon. I may choose to go into touch mode so let me just touch up here go to touch mode spaces out the controls on the ribbon and more, more effectively. Note that when I do that although I basically have the same tabs on the ribbon I do get a different arrangement of buttons in many of the groups so if you look at the font group again you'll see that the buttons are now arranged in a different sequence so that's something to be a little bit careful of and on this occasion what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that line bold so let's start with a B for bold but I'm also going to change the color so the button immediately below the B for bold on the ribbon is the one where I can change the font color. Tap there that brings up a color picker and I'm going to choose a quite a strong reddish color. I'm going to choose that one. Now having made that color change the other thing I'm going to do is to add a bit of shadow to it. So the shadow button is three to the right of bold. Let's put that on as well. Tap elsewhere on the screen and we'll see the full effect of that particular piece of formatting. 
So there we are, that's some of the basic rules of formatting text. We're going to look at some more options for selection a little bit later on, but I just want to show you one or two other very quick things in this section related to text. First of all, if I click back within that box again, I can see the placeholder text box perimeter showing again. If I click to select the whole of the text box, I am in effect selecting all of the text inside it as well. And one of the buttons which is in the font group here, I'm still in touch mode by the way, but I'm going to use keyboard and mouse, is clear all formatting. Watch what happens if I click on clear all formatting. Everything goes back to the original format. It's back to Calibri 60 point again. I could also have done that by swiping across all of the text to select it rather than the whole box and then I could either clear all the formatting or indeed change all of the formatting so for instance if I wanted everything now to be that red color and I wanted everything to have shadow and I wanted everything to have 48 points that's how I do it. Now so far we've been looking at placeholder text boxes. There's another sort of text box, what's called a manual text box, and there are a couple of other things to point out to you about the properties of text boxes and things we can do to improve the presentation of text. And I'm going to cover those in the next section, so please join me for that. Hi everyone, Simon here from Simon Says It. Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, new videos are uploaded to the Simon Says It channel here on YouTube. Just click on the subscribe button right over there. If you're interested in taking your Office 2013 training to the next level, you can get over 70 hours of Microsoft Office 2013 training offered by Simon Says It. Just check out the About section below this video with more details. We'll see you next week with additional videos.